Mrs. Hayes had seen the whole situation very clearly. The bespectacled, round-backed Herr Humbert, coming with his Central European trunks to gather dust in his corner behind a heap of old books. The unloved, ugly little daughter, firmly supervised by Miss Phelan, who had already once had my low under her buzzard wing. Low recalled that 1944 summer with an indignant shudder, and Mrs. Hayes herself engaged as a receptionist in a great, elegant city. But a not-too-complicated event interfered with that program. Miss Phelan broke her hip in Savannah, Georgia, on the very day I arrived in Ramsdale. The Sunday after the Saturday already described proved to be as bright as the weatherman had predicted. When putting the breakfast things back on the chair outside my room for my good landlady to remove at her convenience, I gleaned the following situation by listening from a landing across which I had softly crept to the banisters in my old bedroom slippers, the only old things about me. There had been another row. Mrs. Hamilton had telephoned that her daughter was running a temperature. Mrs. Hayes informed her daughter that the picnic would have to be postponed. Hot little Hayes informed big cold Hayes that if so, she would not go with her to church. Mother said very well and left. I had come out on the landing straight after shaving, soapy earlobed, still in my white pyjamas with the cornflower blue, not the lilac, design on the back. I now wiped off the soap, perfumed my hair and armpits, slipped on a purple silk dressing gown and humming nervously went down the stairs in quest of low. I want my learned readers to participate in the scene I am about to replay. I want them to examine its every detail and see for themselves how careful, how chaste the whole wine-sweet event is if viewed with what my lawyer has called, in the private talk we've had, impartial sympathy. So, let us get started. I have a difficult job before me. Main character, Humbert the Hummer. Time, Sunday morning in June. Place, sunlit living room. Props, old candy-striped Davenport, magazines, phonograph, Mexican knick-knacks. The late Mr. Harold E. Hayes, God bless the good man, had engendered my darling at the siesta hour in a blue-washed room on a honeymoon trip to Vera Cruz. And mementos among these, Dolores, were all over the place. She wore that day a pretty print dress that I had seen on her once before, ample in the skirt, tight in the bodice, short-sleeved, pink, checkered with darker pink, and to complete the colour scheme she had painted her lips, and was holding in her hollowed hands a beautiful, banal, Eden-red apple. She was not shod, however, for church, and her white Sunday purse lay discarded near the phonograph. My heart beat like a drum as she sat down, cool skirt ballooning, subsiding on the sofa next to me, and played with her glossy fruit. She tossed it up into the sun-dusted air and caught it. It made a cupped, polished plop. Humbert Humbert intercepted the apple. Give it back, she pleaded, showing the marbled flush of her palms. I produced delicious. She grasped it and bit into it, and my heart was like snow under thin crimson skin, and with the monkeyish nimbleness that was so typical of that American nymphette, she snatched out of my abstract grip the magazine I had opened. Pity no film had recorded the curious pattern, the monogramic linkage of our simultaneous or overlapping moves. Rapidly, hardly hampered by the disfigured apple she held, Lowe flipped violently through the pages in search of something she wished Humbert to see found it at last. I faked interest by bringing my head so close that her hair touched my temple and her arm brushed my cheek as she wiped her lips with her wrist. Because of the burnished mist through which I peered at the picture, I was slow in reacting to it, and her bare knees rubbed and knocked impatiently against each other. Dimly there came into view a surrealist painter relaxing supine on a beach, and near him, likewise supine, a plaster replica of the Venus de Milo, half buried in sand. Picture of the week, said the legend. 
I whisked the whole obscene thing away. Next moment, in a sham effort to retrieve it, she was all over me. Caught her by her thin, knobby wrist. The magazine escaped to the floor like a flustered fowl. She twisted herself free, recoiled, and lay back in the right-hand corner of the Davenport. Then, with perfect simplicity, the impudent child extended her legs across my lap.